cease and desist. Where do you get the balls? Do y'all know what it's like to go two straight years and have everybody who loves you, everybody who's got your back, including your attorney, to tell you, don't say nothing, don't defend yourself, don't clear your name, don't speak on it. We're going to present it in court. She claims that I kicked her out of the house with my one-year-old baby. Changed all the locks at the house and cut off the credit cards. I was in New Jersey working on a film. I shot two music videos in a row. Do y'all remember every Friday when we was all stuck at home in quarantine? Y'all remember me and Samantha doing date night? Y'all remember I had Tamia and Eric Benet to do that song called Spend My Life With You on Instagram? Do y'all remember that? Y'all remember the gospel singer, Jonathan McReynolds, who I surprised my wife at the time with? That was her favorite gospel singer, one of. Y'all remember Brian McKnight was on there singing to me and she surprised me with Brian because she know I idolize him. Y'all remember that shit? I literally took my love and my marriage and I wanted to create some positive vibrations because everybody was fighting, arguing, being verbally and physically abusive during quarantine. Everybody was filing for divorce. And I said, man, I want to go ahead and use my stage, my platform, and my influence to get people to decide to turn this quote-unquote unexpected negative of everybody being stuck at home in quarantine into something positive. Look at this as an opportunity to hit the reset button on your marriage, on your family, because any man or woman that's out here hustling and grinding, man, we miss our wives when we go out there hustling and getting it. We miss all of these beautiful family moments, pickups, drop-offs, attending every event and every sporting event at the schools for the fathers that are involved like me and for the mothers. And we get caught up in the rat race of running, running, running. And then something about God shut the whole world down and allow for us to hit the reset button. But for some of y'all who's out here cheating on your wives, having kids and shit behind their back, got three, four mistresses, having love, child, got abortions everywhere. Y'all motherfuckers never wanted to be stuck at home with your girl because she was gonna wear your ass out. That wasn't my story. I've been given a cease and desist letter telling me to shut up. I've paid about $350,000 in legal fees for an unexpected divorce. Let me say it again. Do you know what it's like to work your ass off and make money and have to give it all away to attorneys? $350,000 had to be given to my attorney when I had the most detailed prenuptial agreement in place that says, if I or you ever decide that this marriage were to end, my prenuptial agreement protects you, protects me, so that we have an understanding of who gets what, where we land, and where it's at. And let me tell you something else. One of the terms of my prenup, one of them, and it's damn near the first paragraph. Here's a little legal language for you. If you have a contested divorce versus a non-contested divorce, what that means is no one has the legal right to talk about the realness or what they call the validity 
of the prenuptial agreement and all four terms, I mean all four corners, we put our signature at the top of every page that says, you get this and I get that. And they said, if you ever contest the divorce, that means if you ever want to argue about anything that's in the prenuptial agreement, you are 100% responsible for paying your legal fees because you want to argue. You want to hire an attorney and you want to argue about the validity of your prenuptial agreement. This is a legal binding piece of paper that says that if I dislike you, if we argue, if we fight, we don't disagree, all that shit's, you know, nobody wants to fight. But if you're going to divorce and you go to court, everything about what you get and everything about what I get has already been solidified. That's why it's called a prenuptial agreement. It says in a paragraph, if you are contesting this divorce, if you want to argue about the paperwork that we signed in the prenup, you are 100% responsible for paying your own legal fees. That's what it says. Google it. Look it up all over the internet. Google it, Google it, Google it. This woman claims that I kicked her and my one-year-old daughter. A baby got snatched out of her crib. She packed up 50 boxes. Took my daughter. I was actually working on a movie in New Jersey which is now called Rogue Hostage. I left New Jersey on a Friday. I left the movie set about three hours early and they threatened to sue me for like $400,000 because I had more work to do on the movie set and I wasn't supposed to leave. But I was like, nah, she on the phone, she claiming I'm out of here, I'm, I'm done. But I was like, you know what, this could be a woman that's yelling and screaming and she's in her feelings because sometimes we say things that we don't mean when we're mad. I was in New Jersey with a guy named Rod Gardner, who's married to a woman named Leticia Gardner. Samantha was at home with Leticia Gardner with the kids. Rod was in New Jersey with me, training me, and I had my brother Archie out there. Rod told me you know, bro, I've been with my wife for almost 12 years and I've never been away from her for more than four days. So I said, yo, Rod, I'm leaving Jersey, bro. Sam on the phone talking about she out. And why were we arguing? Why were we arguing? Why were we arguing? Why did we break up? Everybody wants to know, did you cheat on her? Did you lie? Did you physically abuse her? Did you verbally abuse her? Were you a toxic, dysfunctional person? No. The only woman I kissed in five years was Naomi Harris in the movie Black and Blue, and I kissed her on her forehead. So I just got a cease and desist letter. But here's my question to you, Samantha. Why didn't you cease and desist from all the lies that you put in legal documents, over 15 lies were in court documents. When you lie under oath, you are lying under penalty of perjury. You can't expect people out here to be thinking of me in a positive light. Now, I can say and do some dumb shit and mess things up for my own life on my own career, but if somebody's going to lie on you and they're going to create these negative, disparaging thoughts and they're going to put them in court documents, you got people out here thinking that I would really throw my wife and my one-year-old baby out to the streets 
change all the locks, cut off the credit cards. So did I change the locks? Yes, I did. I changed the locks four days. Four days after you moved out on your own. I cut off the credit card that was a joint credit card that I put about $25,000 on every month for us. You had your own money, then we had a joint credit card. You had your own credit card. We had a joint credit card. And I was like, baby, whatever you need, here's the money, go do your thing. Were you supposed to leave me? You robbed my house while I was out of town. You took your stuff. I'm not even sure how much shit you took of mine that belongs to me. Because what? I wasn't there. So now you're sending me a cease and desist letter. Rod Gardner jumped on the plane with me. And we end up in an SUV. And we drove somewhere out in the suburbs where they live. I remember I had George Floyd's oldest sister on the phone. Remember that, Samantha? I had George Floyd's oldest sister on the phone. And I walked up to you while you were sitting at the kitchen counter. And I said, baby, I know you want to leave me because I shot two music videos in a row. That's why she left me. I was casting, location scouting. I, 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 I did two music videos on behalf of black culture. I had four dead people in my video. George Floyd, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, and Queen Breonna Taylor. So you marry a singer and an entertainer and then you end up divorcing me because I'm so focused and committed to my craft. I never cheated on you. I never met up with another woman for lunch or dinner or did anything behind your back. I never did anything. I never cheated on this woman. Y'all wanna project toxic masculinity off onto me? What about toxic femininity? What about the fact that her mother has been divorced four times and every time she would go to her mama's house, she was over there saying all this negative toxic shit and ended up compromising my marriage. In the Bible, for all of the believers, it says leave and cleave to your family and your husband. Her mother never wanted her to leave or cleave. So every time they would hang out, if they're having a discussion about things that's going on, whatever that might be. Her mother, toxic, 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 been divorced four times, and she basically brainwashed my wife, I believe, into leaving me. If she left me on her own, then I'm pulling out my human calculator as a human being, and I'm asking, what did I ever say and do that can make this woman to not only leave me, but leave me as abrasively <clears throat> and aggressively as she did? Heartless, narcissistic, sociopathic behavior. That's what my therapist told me this is. When you're a narcissist, there's some positive in being a narcissist. Because when you are a narcissist, you believe in yourself. And you will stop at nothing to do whatever it takes to become successful. When you're a narcissist as a negative, everything is about you. Everywhere you go, everything you do, everything you say, everything, you're always thinking about your own self-interest. And whatever self-interest you have in mind. But when you're a narcissistic, selfish person, where everything is about you, everything, and you're a sociopath, when you say things and you do things and you inflict pain off onto people, you don't have the emotional bandwidth to be able to process what you're saying and what you're doing, and more importantly, how that's hurting someone's feelings. The narcissist will always see everything through their own eyes and through their lens and through their own self-benefit and self-interest. 
But when you're a narcissist sociopath, that is a very, very volatile combination of two of one person. You want to call me a narcissist because I'm an alpha, because I'm loud, because I'm aggressive about my career and how I hustle and do whatever it takes to get it? Or do I believe in myself? Yes, I might be loud, I might be outspoken, I may be an alpha, but I don't have a vile, malicious, evil bone in my body. Ask around. All I do is go above and beyond to love on, pour into people, take care of people. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll, cut, I'll take the shirt off my back to go above and beyond to love on people and pour into people. That's why people love me. I don't fire people because they having a bad week or they dealing with some personal at home. The amount of producers, writers, directors, editors, cinematographers, writers, you know, music producers, songwriters, the amount of people over the years that I've went above and beyond to look out for, man, I can't even keep count. I got people to this day walking up to me to tell me stories about what I did for their life and their career, and I give all praises to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I have never been a selfish person. I've never been the type of person that, that wants to see everything through the lens of how I benefit. I go above and beyond and I help people. That's why people like me always end up fucked up and hurt and broken in the end. Put my hoodie back on, man. It's cold as hell. Anyway, let me go back to my story. Since I have a cease and desist, this will be my last video. I got on the plane with Rod Gardner. We jumped in the SUV when we landed in Atlanta. We drove about an hour outside the city to their suburb. I walked in the house with, on, with, with George Floyd's oldest sister on the phone. And I said, my wife wants to leave me because I shot this legendary video. Look the shit up on YouTube, y'all. It's Tyrese featuring CeeLo Green. The song is called Legendary. The opening of the song, I'm laying on the ground as George Floyd with an officer with his knee on my neck. And then we have Trayvon Martin laying on the ground with Skittles. We got Eric Garner laying on the, on the ground. Rest in peace to all of these kings and queens with, with a pack of Newports on the ground. And then the camera pans over to me laying on the ground as George Floyd. The whole video was with me and CeeLo Green. We were doing date night in LA during quarantine. Every Friday, it's still on my Instagram. I got receipts, I'm telling y'all the truth. I poured and I poured and I poured and I loved on this woman. We didn't even get in, we didn't get in no argument during quarantine. We probably had two disagreements in 10 months. I got back to Atlanta, 6 a.m., Father's Day morning. Father's Day of all days. Two days later, I was running around scouting location. I had the director who directed Black and Blue, Dion Taylor, to come out a couple days later. And I shot the video called Legendary, featuring CeeLo Green. The video was a one-day shoot that much time at all then we shot a video called black excellence it was Tyrese featuring Rick Ross please look up that video Tyrese featuring Rick Ross my brother major was in the video the video is amazing black excellence featuring Rick Ross Guess who was the leading lady in my video? Samantha. I was probably working on both of these music videos for a total of seven weeks. 
You married a singer. You married an actor. That's just like marrying Denzel Washington or Christian Bell and then filing for divorce when they get in character for a movie. You marry me. You want to reap the benefits of my life and my lifestyle to then when it's time for me to sing, edit, do music videos, location scouting, casting, and doing all the things that I did. I poured into you in our marriage for 10 straight months and we were all stuck in quarantine. I shot a music video, then I shot another one, both of them on behalf of black culture. Legendary featured four queens and kings that have been died, brutally killed and murdered from excessive force and police brutality. I have never shot a music video that featured four dead people in my life. So I thought that there was gonna be some backlash that came from the families of these fallen soldiers. Not only did I get all the love in the world from Trayvon's mother, Eric Garner's family, Trayvon, uh, 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 Breonna Taylor's family, and George Floyd's family, Tanya Floyd, George Floyd's oldest sister said, if your wife is gonna leave you because you shot two music videos on behalf of the civil rights movement, put me on the phone with her. I walked into Rod and Leticia's house with George Floyd's sister on the phone. And she begged Samantha to not leave me. The Floyd family is still traumatized because of what happened to George. Now she's on the phone trying to tell my wife to not leave me because I went and shot music videos on behalf of murder, excessive force, brutality. This woman packed up 50 boxes while I was in an airplane on the way home to save my marriage and my family for whatever it is that she wanted to leave me over. I'm going to tell y'all the worst part. And then I'm gonna get off the video. I gotta cease and desist. But as I cease and desist, I can only talk about the things that Samantha put in court documents. This ain't no miracle on a Monday. I'm not out here representing the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ while doing vile, evil, and disrespectful things to my husband. You handing out miracles on Mondays, but you don't want to tell nobody the truth. I'm going to tell my truth, and then I'm going to shut up and I'm going to leave it alone. While Samantha was packing up her 50 boxes that she paid for with my credit card, she used my credit card to leave me. I was in the airplane flying home from New Jersey to save my family and my marriage. She has six or seven people to pull up to the house. She somehow found out I was headed home to try and fight for my family. And she packed up 50 boxes to leave me. But you know what makes it worse? She has a therapist named Stacy that she's been with for well over 10 years. Pastor John Gray and Aventer Gray, as y'all know, they're my favorite people. I love them, I love them, I love them. I've been there for them, they've been there for me. Because someone's a pastor, doesn't mean that they're perfect, doesn't mean that they'll never say and do anything to make a mistake. We as Christian folks, we put pastors up on super high platform and stage and we expect them to be perfect. But nobody's perfect. This man and this, this woman, Aventer, and John Gray were having some marital problems at the time. And God bless Samantha for doing this. She arranged for her personal therapist named Stacy to show up to my house to do a three hour therapy session with Aventer Gray in her office with her personal therapist. But you know what's crazy? <laughs> she arranged for Samantha, she arranged for Aventer Gray to have a therapy session to save her marriage with Pastor John Gray. And when Aventer Gray 
walked out of her therapy session. She came into the foyer in my house. Y'all know that bumblebee, that big old bumblebee in my foyer? She came out of her therapy session with Samantha's therapist to save her marriage. And she came out to see 50 boxes in the foyer. She's arranging for her to help save her marriage, to have a wife who's trying to save her marriage through therapy, through the power of God, who could heal all things. When Aventa Grace, Gray stepped out of her therapy session with, with Samantha's therapist, she walked into the foyer to see 50 boxes with seven people rushing and packing to leave the house. She took my one-year-old baby from me, packed up all of her shit, left her family, her marriage. And what is the reason? Because I shot two music videos in a row. And she asked me in the kitchen, it wasn't funny at all at the time, but I'm sitting there and everybody's like, this sounds bizarre. This can't be true. You had to have said and done something else. Well, if I did something else, if I said something else, if I treated my wife any other kind of way at the time, why didn't she say it? Avin to Gray walked out of her therapy session in Samantha's office that Samantha arranged to help save her marriage. And Aventer was like, what's going on? What, what is going on? And she said, don't worry about it. You know, I'm just grabbing a couple things, blah, blah, blah. She said whatever she could say to Aventer Gray to calm her down because Aventer can obviously see this woman is about to leave her husband. But she appeased her. She manipulated her. She made her feel like everything is cool. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry about it. Aventer left the house and was like, well, you know, if you don't want to talk to me, I mean, you're obviously trying to help me to save my marriage. I'm a woman of God. He who finds a wife finds a good thing in favor from the Lord. I'm a woman of God. I got something else to do right now. But if you're about to leave your husband, if you're helping me to stay with my husband, then I need to sit here right now and commit myself to your marriage and your family as well. What's going on? No, no, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Cease and desist. I will, but I'm gonna tell my truth. Then I'll cease and desist. You never cease and desist from putting all these lies all over all of these court documents. You and your attorneys never cease and desist from damn near charging me $350,000 in legal fees. You never cease and desist concerning yourself about saying all of these evil and disparaging things about me and, and fucking up my character and compromising my reputation and compromising my survival. There are people out here that could have decided to not hire me. Thank God they didn't. There, there could have been people out here who decided, fuck Tyrese, I'm not going to his concert. He kicked that woman out. This woman is beautiful. They got a baby together, man. Fuck Tyrese. Thank God nobody believed your goofy ass. So after Aventure left, she took 50 boxes. They left. I landed with Rod, jumped in the SUV, went to Leticia Gardner's house. And I said, man, go on in the house and spend that time with your family. Go on and love on your wife and your family. I took you away from your wife for two weeks. You told me you've never been away from your wife for more than four days. I flew back home with Rod. I said to Sam, after she got off the phone with George Floyd's sister, they were on the phone for like 35 minutes. She was like, you know, we gonna work it out. We gonna figure out. Once again, appeasing people, manipulating, and making somebody feel like you're actually listening, believe that you're actually going to do something or change your mind. Thank God for Tanya Floyd. I appreciate you trying. With all of the trauma that you and your family was dealing with, the fact that you got on the phone to try and help me to save my marriage, I'm beyond grateful. She got off the phone with George Floyd's older sister. She came out on the front porch. We talked. I said, Sam, I love you. 
I don't know what's going on. I love you. I mean, y'all know I'm an R&B singer, right? I'm one of the best beggars out there. I know how to beg and plead when I want something. What I wanted was my wife and my family. I've been making money all my life. I've had over 100 cars. I done been through all my jewelry and all of the mansions. I done, I done done it on levels, man, for well over 20 years. What I ain't never had is a marriage and a family. That was, that was more fulfilling for me than anything I've ever had, ever. I realized how empty my life was until I got married. I realized how empty my life was until I had a marriage and a family. Not having children with random women, linking up with five, six different women, baby mamas, and considering that a family. Wanting to have a marriage and a family gave me a level of peace and stability. It calmed my mental health, made me feel like I finally had something. And when you feel like you have something, you will go above and beyond to fight for it and never want to lose it. So I left my movie set. They threatened to sue me for $400,000. Thank God they didn't. I told them, I've done movies for over 20 years. If it's a matter of me staying here to do this movie on this Friday, we still got two weeks of filming left. If it's a matter of me losing my job or y'all firing me and suing me, I don't give a fuck. I'm going home to fight for my marriage and my family, bro. She's talking about leaving me because I shot two music videos over the course of seven weeks. I'm out of here. I got on the front porch. I talked to Samantha. I said, baby, let's go home. You've been over here for about a week and a half hanging out with your friend. Let's go home, babe. Keep in mind, I jumped in an Uber SUV. Therefore, I had no car. I had no transportation. It's COVID out here. Nobody was using Uber and Lyft at the height of a pandemic. So I jumped in a freaking SUV, mask on the whole time. I get all the way hour outside the city. I put her on the front porch. And I said, baby, let's go home. She's got the only vehicle here. So, of course, we're here. We may be arguing, fighting, going back and forth. But let's go home, baby. Grab the baby. Grab all of her stuff. Let's go home. With a straight face. Cold. Never thinking about me. Never thinking about my daughter. Never thinking about my other daughter. Who's, who loves Sam. She got her own mama, but she loves Sam. Let's go home, baby. Get the baby, let's get out of here. With a straight face, cold. She looked at me in my face and said, I'm not going home. I don't live there no more. I said, baby, what do you mean? I don't live there no more. What, what do you mean you don't live there no more? So where do you live? That doesn't matter. Baby, what are you talking about? When you leave here, you're going home. I don't live there no more. As a matter of fact, when you get home, I took all my shit out the house. I said, what are you talking about? When you go to your house, I took all of my shit out the house. I don't live there no more. I'm out. I mean, I'm thinking I'm being punked, man. I'm waiting on Ashton Kutcher to come out of a fucking back door somewhere out of a curtain and be like, ah, oh, you're being punked. Unfortunately, it was not a joke. We ate on the front porch, some little fast food. She's sitting there literally casual, you know? Yeah, you know, we disagreeing, we arguing. And, and I remember when she said to me when I was in the kitchen, she said to me, while I had all these people, we're editing, creating, recording, CeeLo Green at the house. We, 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 we at it for seven straight weeks, working my ass off. And I was at home. I wasn't even at another place editing, casting. I did everything from home. I was busy, but I was home. 
I remember she said in the kitchen, babe, 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 I was like, what's going on, baby? I got people waiting on me downstairs. She said, are you not attracted to me anymore? I said, what, I said, Sam, what are you talking about? Are you not attracted to me anymore? I said, baby, are you saying that because I've been busy hustling and moving, coming up, coming to bed at 6 a.m. in the morning? You know, this was like a, it was almost like we back outside and finally I get to create. But instead of creating something to benefit me, I did it on behalf of the civil rights movement. If I can use my stage, my power, my influence as, as, an, as an artist, this is what the fuck we need to do. Can't be out here just promoting movies and TV shows and albums when we got all of this trauma, real trauma going on out here in the world. Now, some of y'all don't want to use your influence, your stage, and your platform to make a difference. But I've always been vocal and outspoken about my shit. It doesn't matter if that directly affects my family. If you black and you brown, or if you white, if you Jewish and you dealing with anti-Semitism, if you gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and you got people out here beating you up because of your choice of lifestyle or what you choose to do or who you chose to love, that's not right. If you're a police officer and you abusing your power, murdering us like flies as black and brown people, that's not right. So I decided to use my voice, my stage, and my platform to shed light on black culture and the strife and the traumas that we were all living and experiencing in real time. And my wife left me for that reason. And now she over there handing out miracles on Monday, lying under penalty of perjury. She's been caught at least 15 times lying. Now, I gotta go back to court because the divorce has been finalized, but not really. And that's why I can't say nothing else. The only thing I'm talking about and the only thing I'm addressing are the things that have already been public and all of the public court documents. And this is my attempt at clearing my name, all while not giving a fuck if y'all believe me or not. It's my truth. She left me on the front porch, put my baby in the back seat of the car, and drove the fuck off and left me an hour away from my house. My first Uber in damn near a year was when Samantha left me cold-blooded and drove off with my daughter and left me on somebody else's front porch. And yet you out here <laughs> giving out miracles on a Monday? Follow Rod Gardner and Leticia Gardner. Hit up Aventa Gray and Pastor John Gray. Hit up Tammy and Kirk Franklin. Hit up uh, uh, Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and favor from the Lord. One thing y'all ain't gonna ever do is stop me from telling my truth. And as I'm telling my truth, you know, it takes two to tango. That's your side. She got a side. Y'all go ahead and ask her about her side. You better come with a real motherfucking story if you're going to try and make me look bad. I could not say anything about none of this shit until now. And then you know what's even crazy? Me and my attorney, Tanya Mitchell Graham, finally got to court after almost $350,000 in legal fees to then have the judge to illegally shut us down and stop us from presenting proof and evidence that everything that she said on record was a fucking lie. But I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm hurt. I've slipped in and out of depressions. There is no anxiety pill. There is no therapy session. There is no being around other people, homies, friends showing up. I got some of the most amazing people in my life. 
amazing. And I thank all of y'all for showing up because y'all know I've always shown up for you. But I'm so fucking hurt. And I'm so confused. And as a human being, y'all can say, yo, you a millionaire, nigga, get over. You live in a mansion, drive a Rolls Royce, get over. Well, I got some unfortunate news for all you folks that ain't got no money. Don't live in a mansion. Don't drive a Rolls Royce. Don't have $10 billion on your name. I got some unfortunate news for all of y'all. All this money and materialistic shit, man, that none of that shit can stop you from feeling confused and hurt and slipping into depression and questioning at times, should I end my life? Because if my life was my wife and my family and I don't have it no more, what am I still here for? You think you're going to book me for another movie and I'm going to be good? I've been doing movies for too long for me to give a fuck about a movie. I've been singing for too long for me to be, you know, selling out 30,000 in concerts and thinking that that's, that's going to replace this deep hole that I have in my chest for being confused about all of this shit that went down. You know? Women leave their husbands for other women all the time. Women leave their husbands for the side nigga all the time. Maybe I've been too busy and maybe you found another man who's been on the phone giving you day and night attention because I've been running around busy. I'm not saying she cheated on me with a man or a woman. I never cheated on her. I don't think that's the case. But I did find out who she was dating. I did find out who she was dating. And he's very famous. But I can't talk about that right now. I'm not even jealous of him. But he's very famous. Y'all remember she went viral on her Miracle Monday? And they asked her the question, you know, Samantha, with all that you've been through again, playing victim while being the victimizer, you know, Samantha, with all that you've been through and you out here trying to figure your single life out, you a single mom now by choice, you know, you and your marriage fell apart. She ended the marriage, not me. You know, you out here on your own now trying to figure it out, hustling, trying to build yourself up by your day to day. There's real women out here that's really out here as single mothers. You a single mother by choice. There's real women out here that decided to leave their husband because they got beat, they got lied on, they cheated, they had five kids behind their back, they did all kind of fuck shit. And, uh, 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 why did you leave your husband again? Because I shot two music videos. Huh. You married a singer, and then when it's time for me to sing, you leave me? When it's time for me to go do a movie like Teddy Pendergrass and I get in character because this man was quadriplegic and I gotta be in that dark place and headspace for three months while working with Lee Daniels and you you saying to me that I'm not acting my usual self? I can't be my usual self right now. I'm grinding, I'm focusing. Do you leave LeBron James because he's in the gym all day practicing and playing basketball? Do you leave Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, because he gets up at 4.30 in the morning to go shoot around in the gym? You get in relationships with powerful men and women that are lawyers, real estate, doctors, you know, businessmen and women, political figures. You get in relationships with people, you're attracted to the power to then leave them because you become threatened and intimidated by the power. Do you love me for my money, my power, and my influence, or me as a person? Do you love the life that we live together? And you know, I could appreciate a motherfucker willing to leave me. You know, I'm out. I don't care how much you work, what you drive, what you live in. If I don't want to be your friend, I don't want to be your friend. But find me a scripture in the Bible that says, it's okay to leave your husband. Find me a scripture in the Bible since you're always talking about the Bible, Samantha. Find me a scripture in the Bible that says it's okay to leave your husband if you marry a singer and he does two music videos in a row 
it's okay to leave your husband if you feel like he ain't giving you enough attention over the course of seven weeks while he's working his ass off. I really don't believe that scripture exists. So as your attorney has sent me a cease and desist, I hope that the judge can play this full video in court. The fact that you didn't let me and my, my, my attorney testify and present our full case. Every time we tried to go into details about what she actually said and did, you shut us down. And then because of your conduct, your honor, Judge Farmer, because of your conduct throughout the trial, which was two days, you called Samantha, you was in your chambers, in your jury, in, in your in your judge chambers, with a total of six attorneys, her attorneys and mine, and you call Samantha a gold digging bitch. Those are your words, Judge Farmer. You said, I don't give a fuck if she's a gold digging bitch. Blah, 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 and everything else you said after that. Then you told my attorney, you need to get out there and tell your client to shut the fuck up. You need to go out there and put your foot on his neck and make him shut up, or I'm going to arrest him for being in contempt of court. Hey, hey, Judge Farmer, I don't have a racist bone in my body, my brother. But did you really tell a black woman? Did you really tell a black attorney? Did you say the words in front of these black men and women? I don't give a fuck if she's a gold digging bitch. Did you say Did you say that word? Did you, did you say at the height of all of the sensitivities of George Floyd, did you tell a black woman named Tanya Mitchell Graham, one of the top family law attorneys in all of Georgia, did you tell Tanya to go out there and put your foot on his neck and make him shut up or I'm going to arrest him for speaking his mind while he's in court? His constitutional right is to present his case. Every time we tried to talk and present anything, this man shut us down. So now we're trying to get this judge thrown off the stand to all of the press and media, journalists and blogs, to all of the Atlanta Journal and any blog, media and press journalists out there that's in Atlanta or anywhere, TMZ, uh, uh, Complex News, uh, Charlemagne the God, Sean King, Attorney Crump, y'all do whatever it takes to get those documents unsealed because the judge illegally sealed our court documents the next day after the two-day trial. He didn't seal them on behalf of our daughter. He sealed them on behalf of his conduct in the courtroom. What I like, what I look like trying to put, get a man out of his job. That man's a judge. They are lawyers. I'm a client. I'm a singer. I don't want nobody to be out of a job. Nobody wants to not feed their family. But you abused your power as a judge on the stand. You verbally whooped my ass in the courtroom. And every time my attorney attempted to talk, you shut her down. But yet you let them present proof and evidence. Every time we tried to present proof and evidence about anything, you literally shut us down. Like I said, I just got a cease and desist from my attorney. Sorry, from Samantha's attorney. They want me to shut up. They want me to stop talking about the case. Well, I'm actually not talking about the case because we still got another trial coming up because of the judge conduct. And everything that I'm talking about is everything that's already been said and mentioned in the court documents that you guys in the press and the media could easily get a hold of. Because everything that you say and do or accuse someone of in court documents, the whole world could pay cash money to pull the transcripts. Everything that Samantha lied about, 
all while handing out miracles on Monday is bullshit. And this is the first time I've ever been able to clear my name. Now, I'm going to wrap this up by saying this. After begging and pleading my wife damn near five months to come back home, saying and doing whatever it takes, begging and pleading, I'm sending pastors, men and women of God, I'm saying meet up with her, talk to her. I'm depressed, I'm sad, I'm miserable. I don't know what I said, what I did, but if, I don't, if you don't want me to work that hard while I'm singing and acting and doing movies, I'll slow it down. I won't book as many movies. I won't sing as much. I won't... I ended up damn near trying to compromise my own hotness and my career to cater to whatever needs I needed to because clearly pouring into her, if I'm standing in my front yard with a water hose and my grass is green, if I go six weeks without pouring into the grass, it's going to die. Well, I just gave you 10 full months pouring into you. I thought that was enough, man. I just wanted to go shoot two music videos. And the second video, I had you as my leading lady. Y'all look it up, man. Legendary, Tyrese, legendary. Put that in my comments. Tyrese, legendary, featuring CeeLo Green. Type that in right now in the comments. The second video is called, it's Tyrese featuring Rick Ross. Y'all look it up on YouTube. Look at how beautiful Samantha is in the Black Excellence video. And just know, this woman filed for divorce for those two videos. Then she asked me, am I not attracted to her anymore when this is the most beautiful woman I've ever laid my eyes on? How are you confusing busy with you not being tracking no more? You got some deep-rooted insecurities and you, you, your, lack of, your lack of being fulfilled will never, ever, ever be enough. I'll never be able to say, do, arrange, or orchestrate anything ever in my life that can make you feel fulfilled. If you're gonna leave me the way you left me because I was out and you came to the legendary video shoot. Attorney Benjamin Crump was in the video who represented Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Eric Garner, and Trayvon Martin. God rest their souls and God bless their families. I'm not supposed to be divorced, man. I'm not supposed to be here. Not over being a singer. You can enjoy the life and the fruits of my life, and you got $10,000 that the judge supposedly supposed to be giving you. I'm not giving you no $10,000 a month. It ain't happening. We're gonna do a brand new trial. The most the people end up paying in Fulton County is that like three thousand dollars the most the max that's the maximum in fulton county in georgia that's the law <laughs> this man said you're gonna give your daughter ten thousand six hundred and ninety dollars who's only three years old in atlanta the same amount of money i'm giving my 15 year old in california california law in the family court system ain't got nothing to do with the georgia law my daughter in L.A. is 15 years old. The cost of living in California is way more extreme than the cost in Georgia. And her mother makes $160,000 a year on her own. I may be a multimillionaire. I've always made more money. But if we're talking about the actual needs of a child that's three years old, you live in a beautiful two-bedroom, three-bedroom townhouse. My daughter ain't in the ghetto living in the projects. You ain't never called me and asked me for anything since you left me. Why? Because you making more than enough money. So why did this judge say 10,690 for a three-year-old when her mother makes 160, I make what I make? My first baby mama has been unemployed for over 15 years even though she's very capable of working. It's called being a professional baby mama. Might sound harsh. Might sound mean. Might sound disparaging. But it's the truth, man. It's the truth. And the truth 
is uncomfortable. Now she has her truth. You got a bunch of people, as far as your friends, they may decide, I don't like Tyrese. Your friends don't even know why you did this shit to me. Tammy Franklin, Aventa Gray, Taffy Dollar, these are some of the most powerful, influential women of God who have stayed with their husband through it all. These are your friends. They don't understand why you left me. This shit hurts, man. I am a human being. I cut, I bleed, I put on my pants one leg at a time. I am a human being. I'm hurting. I've been in therapy. My reputation has been tarnished. Next time you want to hand out a miracle on a Monday and start using any scriptures from the Lord Jesus Christ, the man that I serve, I sin, I fall short, but I don't use the Lord Jesus Christ as a form of manipulation to manipulate people into loving me and believing in me while I'm playing victim and you hiding all your knives behind your back. It's not right. And then me and you woke up on September 11 to all of the accusations from my ex. Did you forget how it feels to wake up to lies? Everything about the energy in and around my marriage was compromised because we woke up on September 11 to accusations from my ex-wife. And then you leave me and you end up lying in court documents too. I don't know what kind of miracles you handing out on Monday. I ain't been able to talk about this shit till now. This is gonna be my last video and I'm gonna put the shit up on my Instagram and I hope you and your attorneys cut and paste this presented at our next trial. Hey, Your Honor, Judge Farmer, these are all of the things that you didn't let me and Tanya, my attorney, present in court. You know, I got some shit to say, but it's my truth, Your Honor. Whatever your goal and your agenda was, maybe you got a problem with a black man making this much money. Maybe you got a problem with a black man being successful. Maybe you got a problem with the fact that Georgia is now Democrat and is no longer Republican. Maybe you got a problem with the fact that 45,000 uh, voting ballots was canceled because of racist Governor Kemp. Maybe you got a problem with all kind of shit. I don't know, man. But as a sitting judge, me and my attorney were supposed to come to court and have our day in court and be able to present receipts, proof, evidence, and facts so that I can clear my fucking name. You stopped us from doing that. And that is illegal. And then you sealed our court documents the next day and me nor the other side even requested that. As a matter of fact, and I'm gonna close it out on this, this is what's really illegal. Not only did he seal our transcripts and our court documents, but we were supposed to request that my lawyer was supposed to say, yo, let's seal this. Let's seal all the transcript. Their attorney was supposed to say it. And not only were we supposed to request for our transcripts to be sealed, we were supposed to have a hearing in order for the judge to approve of the court documents being sealed. This judge named Judge Farmer took it upon himself to seal it, and he did not seal it on behalf of my daughter. He sealed it on behalf of covering his tracks. And then he grabbed a child support payment from California and said, I'm gonna give this three-year-old the same child support number in Georgia. That is illegal, sir. Okay, cool. Now, I can't talk about nothing else. 
I got my cease and desist from her attorney. And she was able to get all of her lies out. And now I'm telling my truth. And from this point on, sir, meaning her lawyers and representation, I will cease and desist. Drop the motherfucking mic. Y'all have a great day, boys and girls. Y'all have a great day.